listening to Living with ADHD and CPTSD, available on Apple and wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome to another episode of Living with ADHD and CPTSD. I'm going to talk today about something that has personally affected me when it comes to my ADHD, and that is shame. Dealing with shame when you are living and functioning with ADHD, whether it's hyperactive ADHD or inattentive ADHD or having a combination ADHD is a very common thing and as a lot of people say ADHD and shame are hand in hand and I have personally been dealing with it a lot lately and throughout this entire time for the last year and a bit since I've been trying to figure out what was going on and getting my diagnosis completed. Often things that I do in my life that are ADHD related, like um, poor impulse control, being inattentive and having a hard time focusing and concentrating on what you are doing in the moment and having a hard time listening properly, uh, often forgetting something that you've been told, uh, executive function issues, even though it, it is common amongst all the areas that I deal with, uh, not just ADHD, but autism and CPTSD. But it is very highly active and problematic when it comes to ADHD because of the fact that you're not able to focus on what you're doing. You're having, you have a hard time staying attentive and staying with what is currently going on in the in that time. Your executive function doesn't really function at all. Well, it does, but it's a, it's very poorly functional. So, you know, you don't think about the future. You're only thinking about the, the present time. Um, you have very poor ability to plan ahead. Um, plan sufficient you know like properly as well like your step your your steps to getting uh all your tasks done efficiently and properly but among everything that occurs all the problems that are happening that repeat and this is despite being on medication that is supposed to really help improve your focus abilities and the and my concentration and reduce or eliminate next but nearly to no symptoms whatsoever every time something occurs i feel a large sense of shame i have a shame a shame spiral where i feel extremely guilty and st- extremely bad and my my lack, my confidence level drops very high or very, very quickly and very dramatically when I have symptoms occur, especially when they definitely directly affect me at the moment that I'm having the problem. So I want to talk about my own issues that I'm having to deal with my shame as I'm having my ADHD symptoms arise. And I do have it happen on a regular basis. Despite being on uh, 50 milligrams per day of Vyvanse, I'm still having some problems and some issues with impulse control. Um, I often say things without having any ability to think about what I'm going to say. And that has been a very constant problem. And I am having an extremely difficult time managing and preventing that so i do i also have some articles 
that I have found online that I feel will be very beneficial to everybody who deals with shame because of the ADHD or because of other issues as well. But this is mainly to do with ADHD. Okay, so I'm going to talk about my stuff first. This is usually I read the articles and give you guys all the scientific information and the expertise and then talk about my personal experiences. But I'm going to talk about my experiences at the beginning and then read the article. Okay, so when I I think what I'll talk about right now first is I have, as I said already, I get this impulse problem where and the best example I can think of is I is my girlfriend is is talking to me and she questions like she she notices something not right or there's a mistake or there's a problem or she's inquiring about something potentially that is bad that that has occurred and she'll ask me the question or and she also and it even happens in the follow-up questions uh if later on in in the current in the discussion that that starts but she'll she'll ask me the question and i will and it's so subconscious and it's so instinctive it's not like i'm sitting there thinking to myself that i am going to be impulsive when i respond and i give a response it's impulsive and a lot of times it will be like i don't know so she'll she'll ask why did you do this or why why is this here or what's 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 the answer this is blah 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 what is what's the answer and I, and i'll impulsively go i don't know and i'll even she she'll the the worst part is that she'll she'll be like getting upset at me because of the fact that i'll say i don't know so fast and I'll say to herself, and I, because I, I did say this once, and this is very recently, I did say to her, I was thinking about it instantly in the moment that you were asked, as you were asking me, and I gave you the answer. And she called me on it and said, that's total bullshit, and you know it. And it took, like, I was already kind of riled up, and I was getting excited and frustrated because of the fact I did it again for the umpteenth millionth time being impulsive she called me on it and I eventually was able to realize it takes some time which was is which has been extremely difficult already to stop and think about what happened and I will say to her okay that obviously wasn't was not correct that was not a very you know, true response, or that wasn't that wasn't cur- that wasn't the right answer. I was being impulsive because instead of going and stopping myself and thinking, like you know, like you literally you're you're hearing the question and it's coming at you and and you're it's entering your mind, and before you can even stop yourself or stop and think about it as it's happening. Your brain is already slowly but hastily coming up with that response. Like it's that automatic, and it's a very swift and very adamant response as well. It's not like, oh, I don't know. It's, I don't know. Like, boom, done. I try to think about it. Like, I, I, I remember sitting in my chair. I had some free time because she got frustrated, and so we separated for a bit into separate rooms and I remember sitting there and I'm thinking to myself why am I having such a hard time like I I know that I'm being impulsive it's not like I don't know why I'm being impulsive I get it it's my ADHD I may be a diagnosed inattentive ADHD but the psychiatrist did say that I do have some impulsive tendencies just you know with it so it's not like I'm 100% 100% inattentive with no hyperactive because impulse isn't necessarily true hyperactive. It's just, it's the lack of ability, as you are aware, to stop yourself and think about what your answer is going to be or what your actions are before you do it. <coughs> Excuse me. 
so yeah, like I'm, I'm sitting there and I'm thinking and I'm trying to understand it and I'm going, this, this is crazy. She's talking and, and I'm hearing her and it's like, I can't just, I can't find that little piece or that little trick or that little way of going, okay, she has, she's asked me the question. She has stated what she's saying. Stop, think, hold it back, try to, try to come up with that answer and then give it to her. And it's just, it's, it's like, it's so built in. It's such an instinct to say it, whether it's, I don't know, or I can't, or, or maybe you even say something that's like, like I have where I've said something that sounds, doesn't make sense. Like it kind of sounds like, blah, right. You might as well have said blah, 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 in the way that goes because of the fact that it doesn't, it's, it's coming out in a, in a nonsensical way and it doesn't, and it's not logical. It's not related properly. So you, yeah, it's, it's as, as if you're saying garbled, garbled gook or whatever. So I know there are other things like my, I do have improved. I, my focus level has really improved and I, but it's not perfect. So obviously there's focus involved because if you can really focus a hundred percent on the question and then you can find it in you to pull away and stop before you respond, you have a much better chance of understanding, comprehending the question and then getting it out, getting the answer that is correct, efficient, a quality answer and make it sound proper, you know, like make it make sense, make it so that it goes, ah, yeah, I see. Okay. All right, good. You know, instead of confusion on, on her end and anger and frustration and short temper, right? You gotta, you've got to find that way. So this happens over and over. <clears throat> and despite my best efforts, which in my mind at the moment, I feel like it is my best effort it is really 100% my best attempt to be to not be impulsive. It occurs. And I end up especially if it's a bad one and and we get into a, a, a good fight about it I start shortly after feeling a lot of shame and a lot of disgust and anger towards myself and I just all I think I think things like oh my god I am such a stupid idiot you know you, you start to believe that you can't fix this that you can't make it better that no matter how hard you try it's just not going to work and I sit there and I and I'm you can tell you can see it you can feel the the lack of emotion you can feel the the change in the tone and the change in the tempo of like in the vibe of my voice you can tell that I'm I'm in a shame cycle and if I don't notice that it's there immediately it's going to just cycle and get worse and it's going to go deeper into the hole and then you're going to have a much harder time getting out and I have had moments in my past, like recent past, where it was so bad that I, I literally sat at the front window in the living room in my chair and I barely moved. I looked out the window. I was staring at a tree, you know, the odd eye movement because I'm, you know, I'm, I can't, I don't think anybody can stare at one thing for an hour without moving but yeah I I just sat there and I looked at that I looked out the window and I felt completely lost I felt like I had no chance I had nothing to lose I had nothing to gain I was completely out of this I just there was just no hope and that I was a loser that I felt like I felt 
guilty. I felt like I'm I'm an idiot. I'm stupid. My brain's never going to get better. Why does this always happen to me? You know, like I started thinking all sorts of really negative feelings and the emotions that were that were starting that were trying to come out were extremely sad and extremely negative and very hard to deal with because I'm not I don't deal with negative emotions very well. And when they start to come up, it's there's an automatic resistance to it, like to not allow it to come as out as as it should in any healthy human being. So, yeah, I sat there. I think it had to have been an hour doing nothing. I I, I didn't look at anything. I was quiet. I just felt, I felt like I was in the middle of nowhere like my brain didn't do anything I didn't think it well I didn't think but it wasn't that the there were some thoughts but it, it, none of it was any had any made, made any sense like it was just bits and pieces the entire time and it was extremely just frustrating and it's tiresome because you sit there and you and you're in this shame cycle and you go round and round and round and round and and you is you don't you, you can't find that door to get out. Like it's, it's like, let's just say there's like 10 doors and none of them work. The correct door isn't even in that room, but you can't get out of that room. So you're stuck and you just, it, it, the feeling that you have that I had was just complete and utter despair. And I was distraught and I was sad and I was extremely frustrated and angry at myself and there were times where I would even get angry at my girlfriend I didn't I wouldn't say anything because I wasn't speaking but I there were times where I was feeling anger towards her because I'm sitting there going why do you do this you know like but ultimately it came back to me the root of it was me feeling shameful that I can't stop it like I keep starting these fights because it's I say stupid things impulsively I sound stupid I sound like a moron you know like it's <clears throat> sure it sounds like to many of you you probably have thoughts in your head that it sounds like you're playing you're, you're trying to be the victim and you're trying to blame other people the thing is, is that I'm not blaming anybody else. I'm not going, it's my girlfriend's fault. It's the world's fault. I'm not thinking society is causing this. I realize that my brain is broken, that it's messed up and that I can't, I can't control that ability or I have extremely hard time controlling that need to respond immediately, like an automated response, like an instinctive, you know, without thought, without any sort of ability to comprehend to to think about the consequences the positive and the negative aspects of, of what you're saying no ability to do that and you just say it out loud and it's and it sounds deliberate it sounds selfish it sounds like like defensive and and it's difficult to even realize necessarily in that exact moment that you've done it sometimes your brain like my brain's tricks me sometimes to makes me think that it's legit you know like I don't go oh crap that was so impulsive right away right like I'm not I'm not noticing it so I'm not admitting to myself or to her that I, I would that was an impulsive statement that it was dumb and then apologizing profusely saying yeah that was a stupid thing to say I just wasn't myself blah 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 you know all the things I it I I have such a hard time noticing and realizing in that moment that that's what I've done sucks because I so badly want to stop it. I want to end this impulsive behavior because it's it does nothing. There's no good that comes out of it. It's a negative thing. It's it ha, it shows signs. It, it like to other people who don't know. It's it's like signs of of poor education, poor intelligence you know, bad behavior, bad learned, like you, it is, it is genetic, of course, but someone's going to think that you learned it from somebody because if, if they've seen this before in other people, they are going to associate you with that. So you have to, it, it, it's very difficult and you, 
it, it have a hard time maintaining friendships and relationships because of this because you get impulsive and you say things especially if you're angry like if if, if something's going on and, and you're feeling persecuted <clears throat> and you feel like people are being unfair to you especially in the work environment if you feel that this is unfair and you might say something that is not appropriate or that you will regret very soon because you you need to as an adult they they learn and they realize that sometimes often more often than not it's better to just keep it to yourself than to speak it because if it's not as bad as you think you're going to save yourself from possibly getting fired or losing a friend or burning bridges that you can't repair all right we're going to take a break and then when i come back i will read the article and we can further discuss shame and adhd Okay, so this article that I have, there's a couple that I want to read. And I think they're both really, like, the way that they're written is very good. And you're going to get a, good, get a lot out of this, which is exactly the point. And it's going to help you understand shame and ADHD, like how they work together. All right, so shame. The older you get, the more shame you are apt to feel if your ADHD is undiagnosed. Perhaps you feel ashamed of what a mess your pocketbook always is in, or you feel ashamed of how late you usually are, no matter how hard you try not to be, and you feel ashamed that you haven't made more of the abilities you were born with. The shame may penetrate to deeper levels. You may feel ashamed of your thoughts, desires, and predilections. Predilections. Okay, there we go. Likewise, you may feel the only way you can be accepted is by putting on a mask. In addition, you may feel that the Ryu is real you is fundamentally flawed. Why shame is toxic. Such shame is toxic. It is also traumatic. It raises your stress hormone levels and eventually corrodes your memory and executive functions. While your fifth grade t school teacher may have planted the roots of that shame, you are now the one who intensifies it. You imagine harsh judges everywhere, as if the world were swarming with strict fifth grade school teachers. You project the harsh judgments you are making out of, of yourself out onto everyone you meet. Soon the world becomes like a huge set of judgmental eyes looming down on you, and your only option is to hide. With a therapist, a friend, or a spouse, with someone because it is all but impossible to do this alone, you need to talk through or confess what you take to be your sins. As you do this, you will discover that they are not nearly as bad in the eyes of others as they are in your eyes. It is all right that you have messes. People enjoy your unpredictable remarks, and those who don't can look elsewhere for friends. It is all right that you are late. Sure, it would be good to try and be on time, but as long as people know you are not just blowing them off, they can forgive lateness. If they can't, you don't need them as friends either. How boring would it be if everyone were normal? Where would Monty Python or Mel Brooks have come from? Remember what is strange today becomes truth or art tomorrow. Not only does shame hurt, but it also is the chief cause of a huge problem in adults who have ADHD. Shame contributes to their inability to feel good about their achievements. Consequently, it is common for ADHD adults to be all but impervious to positive remarks. <clears throat> Whatever they have legitimately achieved, they feel must have been done by someone else or by accident. Why adults with ADHD can't enjoy their success. One of the main reasons adults with ADHD can't take pleasure in their own successes and creations is simply shame. First, they, they feel too ashamed to feel good. Then they feel too defective to feel nourished. Likewise, they feel it is practically immoral to feel proud of themselves. Healthy pride is such an alien emotion that they have to look back and into the dim recesses of their childhoods. That's because it's the last time they felt proud of themselves, if they can find an instance even then. Shame prevents you from allowing your best self to emerge. Shame gets in the way of every forward step you try to take. 
You call a business and instead of asking to speak to the president or person in charge, you figure you're too small potatoes for them. So you speak to an underling who can do nothing for you. Likewise, you apply for a job, but instead of making a strong case for what you can do for the company, you present a self-effacing persona that is charming but uninspiring. When you go shopping for clothes, you pick outfits that allow you to recede into the background as much as possible. You shake hands, but have trouble making strong eye contact. Similarly, you want to ask a question at a lecture, but fear that your question is a stupid one. Even when you have a bright idea, you don't do anything with it because you figure it must not be that good if you thought of it. You do all the work on a project, then don't speak up when someone else gets credit for what you've done. Finally, when someone doesn't call you back, you assume it was because they found you lacking in some way and on and on. How to override your feelings of shame. Try as best you can to override your feelings of shame. When you shake hands, make eye contact and give a strong handshake, even if you feel second rate. Furthermore, when someone doesn't call you back, assume they're simply too busy. Then give them a call. If indeed they do find you lacking and reject you, don't internalize their judgment. Look elsewhere. You don't want someone who rejects you anyway. And remember, Rejection in one place is just the, st the first step on the way to acceptance somewhere else. That is, of course, unless you let that first rejection stop you. It is heartbreaking to watch an adult con contribute wonderfully to the world, only to feel every day as if she hadn't. Likewise, it is painful to watch an adult work hard and do much good, only to feel as if someone else had done it. To allow the adult who has ADHD to deserved pleasure, to take deserved pleasure and pride in what he has done, he needs to detoxify the shame that has plagued him for years. How to detoxify your shame. To detoxify your shame, you need to engage in a deliberate, prolonged process. It will take some time, but it can and should be done. As long as you feel intense shame, you will never feel the kind of joy in life that you have every right to feel. You will stay stuck in a painful place. Instead, with someone else's help, you can work toward accepting and enjoying your true self. If you struggle with this issue, you should try to get rid of the people in your life who disapprove of you or don't like or love you for who you are. It's important to get rid of or avoid the people who are overly critical of you rather than accepting of you. So get rid of the harsh fifth grade school teachers in your life and within yourself. Getting rid of that which is within you will be a lot easier if you get rid of the ones who surround you. Your shame has allowed them to stay. You have felt that's what you need. Daily reprimands, daily belittlements, belittlements, daily control. But that's the opposite of what you need. It's your shame that lets those people into your life. Your determination not to be ruled by shame any longer will send them away. What you need. Acceptance, people who see the best in you, and want to help you develop that. As you surround yourself more and more with people who see more good in you than you see in yourself, then you will start to feel less afraid and less ashamed. As a result, you will dare to feel proud a little bit at a time. So there's the first article. Nice little article. It's a good motivational. It's uh, Dr. Hallowell, the Hallowell ADHD Centers. Of course, I will add this into the main screen of the published podcast so you can read it. Now, here's another one. This one is dealing with shame when you have ADHD. Shame is an emotion that plays a big part in the lives of people with ADHD. When you feel shame, you feel a huge sense of embarrassment and humiliation about who you are. Shame and guilt are closely connected, although subtly different. Feeling ashamed can lead to many problems, including depression, anxiety, and drug and alcohol problems. 
Here are some common reasons why people feel ADHD with people with ADHD feel shame. The shame of having ADHD. Many people feel shame for having ADHD. Do you? When you feel ashamed of having ADHD, you are ashamed of a part of yourself. You try to keep up the facade so people won't know your struggles behind the scenes. This can be exhausting and lonely because you can't get the support you need or feel close to the people in your life. It would be great if you could be as comfortable with having ADHD as you are with your eye color. Shame of feeling different. A lot of people feel shame about being different from their peers. Children can feel this more acutely than adults. Children desperately want to fit in with their friends and they dislike things that make them stand out or draw attention to themselves. Aside from the behavioral differences that ADHD can bring, such as hyperactivity, there are other differences with having ADHD, such as having doctor's appointments or extra help at school. Shame about having ADHD behaviors. Having ADHD can affect your behavior in all sorts of ways, such as acting impulsively, doing something you feel embarrassed about, not being able to follow a conversation and then feeling stupid. You might feel ashamed of your home because it is cluttered or because you may be always forgetting about things. ADHD affects everyone's behavior differently, but feeling ashamed of it is a common theme. Shame about your history. Do you often think about past failures and feel full of shame? Yeah, I do. I definitely do. Okay, anyways. How things didn't work out with your ex or the time when your credit card didn't work or when you ran out of gas on the highway. You might find your mind often goes back to those memories and each time you relive that shame. Shame about where you are now. A common theme I hear from adults with ADHD is they don't like where they are in life. They didn't reach the milestones they thought they would want they would at this age. Perhaps you see your friends reaching life goals that you want too, and that causes you shame and resentment because you know you are just as smart and capable as them. Ways to heal shame. Luckily, there are steps you can take to address and ease the shame you may be feeling. Acknowledge that ADHD is a neurological condition and many of the things causing you shame are a direct result of having ADHD. When you do this, it lifts the blame and shame you have been inflicting on yourself. Learn as much as you can about ADHD through support groups, books, podcasts, and blogs. This knowledge and support will help you to know it isn't just you. Other people with ADHD experience similar things. This can be very empowering to shake the shame away. Work with a mental health professional who is experienced in working with shame. They can help you process the shame you feel in your life. Your doctor may also prescribe stimulant medication, which can minimize many symptoms of ADHD and allow you to function to your full potential. Change how you speak to yourself. Compassion neutralizes shame. Self-compassion in the form of kind self-talk, the way you would to a child or a friend, has a positive effect on the body. This step alone will change your life. Write a list of the practical things you can do to reduce the shame in your life. For example, if you feel ashamed every time you arrive late at work, develop a strategy so that you arrive on time. Yeah. Here we go. So that's an interesting one. And... There's a lot of articles out there that are very similar. They kind of talk about the same things. Uh, there's one from Ad Attitude Magazine or A AttitudeMag.com that's called How to Hit Pause on ADHD Impulsivity, which is also good um, because a lot of people with impulse issues tend to feel shame because they often regret what they've said so they feel a lot of shame because of that yeah it's not one of those fun things that anybody really wants to deal with i'm sure all right so that's today's episode i hope you enjoyed listening to this i hope it was informative gave you some insight into shame with adhd 
if you would like to contact me and give me like have a te- have a chat, talk about your ADHD, um, maybe you'd like to be on the show, share your experiences with ADHD. I would love that. Give me a c- contact on Twitter. My handle is at ADHD and CPTSD. You can go to my website. It's www.livingwithadhdandcptsd.ca. I really like the fact that I'm able to talk about my experiences with my audience. I hope you guys really find that these episodes are helpful and motivational and inspiring. If you find that these are inspiring and helpful for you and you really like these podcasts, then I recommend helping me out. Give me a donation. Go to my web to this page. It's kofi.com, ko-fi.com slash living with ADHD and CPTSD. You can do two different kinds of monthly donations that will reoccur, or you can do a one-time donation that is of any amount. Anything that you do is extremely grateful and very appreciated. I want to reach out. The more people that know about this show, the more people I'm helping that I'm giving my experiences to. So let people know about it. Spread the word. Tell them about this show. I really want people to hear it and know and learn. Okay, tomorrow we'll, there will be a CPTSD related episode for those who listen to that as well. If you have any questions, contact me. I'd love to chat. All right, everybody. That's it. Talk to you later. Bye.